Dominant Traders Coaching, helping traders around the world take their trading to the next level. Trading five days a week, then am I consistently taking in gains? Am I consistently managing my risk? Am I consistently staying um, mentally calm or, or, or enjoying, the, enjoying the trading? Put it that way. Because believe it or not, trading should be fun. Yeah, and, and right now I'm gonna ask the question, are you guys having fun in your trading today? If you are, I mean, be honest with yourself. Now, if you're here with your money, you're probably not having fun. But if you are you having trading, tap in the chat box. Let me know all the guys that's here or, or girls that's here. What are you having fun today in your trading? Okay. Not always fun. Okay. The more you type, in the chat box, the better I'm going to get. The less you type, I'm not getting through. You're going to really be slowing way down. Okay. Um, join 100%. Okay, not always. And, and I'll tell you guys, when I first started trading, and I did, I enjoyed it at first because it was like carefree, nothing going on. But the more I learned, the less fun it became because I started getting in my own way of thinking. I started fumbling in my trades, getting in, not knowing when to get out of the trade, not knowing other things I need to do. And my consistency wasn't that good, guys. What, I, what that mean there? I was batting at a, a 20 to 30% consistency rate. Now, believe it or not, with the right risk management, you can trade and have a 30% win rate and still be profitable. But I wasn't. Now, how many of you guys right now, your win, your win rate is 50, over 50%? Type in the chat box, yes or no. Mike was over 50%. Well, you're an excellent trader, Mike. Everybody, who, who else? Come on, guys, type it in there. 50%, 50%. Now, everybody, now you guys at 50%, let me ask this question here. Maybe I'm asking it wrong. You 50% today or you 50% period? You 50-50, you make five out of 10 of, five out of 10 of your trades are successful trades. Come on, say yes, yes. For the past three weeks, good. Okay, good. And I'm asking the question, this is not a pass fail. This is not to expose nobody, not to make anybody uh, vulnerable. But the truth of the matter is that you have to be true to yourself. Okay, let's say, for example, that you were not 50%, but you say, well, I am 50% because you don't nobody know that you're struggling. That's the biggest problem because you can't hide behind your failures, man. You got to let somebody help you. If you're having trouble, then get some help from somebody. Say, man, you know what? I am failing. I, mean, I am not, not failing because you can't fail. You can lose money, but you can't fail. Only way you can fail, you have to quit. And if you don't quit, you, you're not going to fail. But the thing, what I want to get at is that you, you want to uh, be having some, have someone walking alongside you. That's what mentorship is about, having somebody walk alongside you while you're developing your trading skill set. And so th this is the question I'm going to be asking you is going to be thought-provoking questions, questions that's going to, going, to, going to make you dig deeply internal, internally to recognize some things and hopefully make some adjustments and some things in your trading uh, strategy, Okay. So if you have a question, type in the chat box. I am watching, so always smaller wins, red, okay. That, that, that right there, Jerry, is a good one right there. So I didn't mean to call your name out. <laughs> this is all recording, but, but you, you're famous now. <laughs> but the thing is, is that when you in the winning trade, you make 50% win, but then your wins is smaller than your losses. Now, that's the real question. How many of you guys right now, oh, your wins are bigger than your losses? So meaning that your green daily or three days out of the week or four days, majority of the time, your green versus red, that may be a more valid question because I know a lot of people will cut their winning trades early for fear of, you know, that they're going to lose it. And then the, the ones that go against them, they hold them a little longer than they should and then they end up making them a, a negative day. Is that a good announcement, an, uh, um, assessment? To you guys? OK. 
Okay. Yep. Yep. I see that. See a few good trades and then a couple of bad trades wiped out the good trades. And, that, and that's, listen, that happens to me sometimes. Okay. It don't happen to me as much as it used to happen to me, but it has happened to me and it happens to me until I have to refocus, reposition myself to get back in place where I start managing my risk better. And that's one of the things we're going to be speaking about risk management. And the, throughout the series, we're going to be going to risk management. Is everything that we do is about risk management because I know this is a fact. If you manage your risk properly, risk properly, your wins will always exceed your losses. Okay. That means that risk management is the number one key to successful trading. Not really as much as you win. Let's put it this way. If I took 10 trades and on 10 trades, I lost five trades. And on the other five, on the other five trades, I won. On my ones that I lost because of my risk management, I only lost uh, 25 ticks. So 25 ticks trading SPY would be $25. And so I lost $25 five times. That's $125. But then on the other five trades, I was successful, but I, I made 50 ticks on the, on the trades, or I made 75 ticks on the trade. The average candlestick size for a SPY is 100 ticks, so about a dollar, so 100 bucks. So if I had five successful trades and they ran 100 ticks or $100, I made $500 and I lost $125, I'm a successful trader, 50, 50. But the only way that would be successful is that the proper risk management's in place. So if you have risk management, I just gave you guys a tool that you don't know it, but there was one there. There's a nugget there. I just said it to you, but, but that's risk management. And if you understand that and know how to enter the trades, then you will take every trade that meets your edge. And we're going to speak about that, your edge, knowing your edge for your consistency. So let's look at, let's go a little further here. So consistency, first three things that you have to understand about consistency, Okay. There are a few things that fights against your consistency, okay? Now, what are the things? And this is, I put it this way here. Consistency starts in the mind, okay? That's what I want to do. Consistency starts in the mind. Consistency is an attitude. Consistency is, of, is your set of beliefs, how you see yourself in the, in the area of trading. Now, I call myself Kelvin, L.A. Kelvin, but master trader, right? So a master trader is what I'm ascribing myself to being, though I may not be a master trader. So I'm speaking myself into a future that I do not yet acquire by my mindset saying that I'm a master trader because a master trader wins at most of their trading. A master trader has rules in place that he follow. A master trader has a game plan. A master trader understands his edges. A master trader looks at the market without bias. A master trader takes the trades, manages the trades, takes profit. So that's a master trader. Now, am I that person yet? No, but I'm going to speak those things that are not as though they were. I'm going to be a creator of my future. Now, guys, you may not know this, but you're a speaking spirit. You live in a body, you have a soul, and you have a spirit. Your spirit lives in the body, you have a soul. I, I messed that all up. Oh, you're a speaking spirit. You, you, uh, oh, I'm, 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 don't worry about it. I'll come back to it. I, I, that's this fogging this man from this, this head cold I got, so don't worry about it. But a few things that I'm going to go through that mess up with your consistency. And the first thing I will say to you is in your mental state. So whether you see yourself as a brand new trader and you're having a rough time, I want you to start speaking positive affirmations over yourself in the area of who you are as a trader. Sure, you're developing to be a, a, Western, a consistent trader. You're developing yourself to be a master trader. You can develop yourself to be these things, but start calling yourself wealth ambassador right now. Um, start calling yourself um, the um, money magnet right now. Start calling yourself top gun right now. Start calling yourself whatever that is that you can, that you can ascribe to that presents a, a winning attitude, a winning person. That's what I want you to start calling yourself today. Even though you're not, even though right now your trading may be stinking, I want you to start calling yourself, I am the master trader. 
why I have great rules, I have disciplines. I'm gonna give you some things to say later on, but I want you to really start calling yourself what you wanna see in the future. Create the future you want in your mind first. They say if your mind can conceive it, your body will achieve it. So can you conceive the fact that right now today, you're a master trader, you're a consistent trader, and then that's going to project on you a winning attitude because a, a master trader has a winning attitude. And that winning attitude, guys, is not something that comes to you externally. It comes to you as internal. It has to manifest itself on the external. So once you conceive it, you incubate it, you grow it in your mental mind state. And when you start to rely on information, you're going to look for information that's winning the information, winning that's going to help you to, to make better decisions when it comes time to taking a trade. So let's look at a few things that I believe that it works against your consistency. One of them is when you think about trade, when you think about trade and trade, when you think about taking a trade, what comes to your mind? Type it in the chat box right now. What comes to your mind? Fear of losing, fear of loss, yeah. Will, it, will, not be, will, will it be a winner? Got to be on it. Yep. I'm going to be right. Yep. Good. Very good. Very good. And guys, this, what you, what you want to see is that when you're taking a trade, you want to have no bias, no expectation, no requirements on the market. God, this sounds crazy, doesn't it? Because everybody, I push that button, they better give me $100. It better, it better move 25 ticks in the, in, the, in the future. Let me pull some money out of this market. You know, I, I do have expectations, and that's not what I'm speaking to you about. What I'm saying to you is that I want you to be neutral when it comes time to take trades because it affects your consistency when you have predetermined, predisposed requirements on the market to do something that it may not never do because you want to take the trade. And that causes us to have some faulty thinking. What does that mean, Kelvin? That means that I'll push the button to take the trade and I'm expecting the trade to get to X, Y, Z in the future. And I'm going to hold on to this trade until it get there, even though it's going against me. Because I pre-required the market to do something in my mind, my mind is looking for the market to respond. My eyes are feeding me information, but my mind can't comprehend. The trade is going against you. The trade is going against you. Cut the trade. Get out the trade. But I have already determined that it's got to get to this place in the future. And since I had the requirement, I'm not being objective enough to take and get out of the trade when it does not work. Because the trade either is going to work or it's not 50-50. You, know, you may hear me say this sometime. You don't have to pay to watch. You can watch for free. I'm the person that will cut the trade at the drop of a dime if it turns against me. You may hear me say this all the time. Long as the candles, if it's a bullish trade, long as the candles stay green, I stay in. If the candle turn red, I get out. You know what I'm doing there, guys? I am mentally conditioning myself to be objective about this trade, if it turns around and not do what it should be doing, then I should not be in the trade. And then I can cut the trade without resistance from my own mind and say, no, Kelvin, you said that the trade need to get to $10. It's only at $9.59. You have 49 cents to go. Uh, not 49, uh, 30, 30, 41, uh, 41 cents to go. And it's going to get there. And then the trade turn around and take all the money back and I get out the market of the red trade. Have that ever happened to you guys before? You almost see your target and you wait and wait and it pulls back and now your mind gonna rationalize. Oh, just hold on. It's gonna come back. It's gonna come back. It's gonna come back. It's gonna come back. And then you end up having a red trade. You cut the trade where you were up, you were winning, but you left the trade, that didn't take the money out because you predisposed your mind <laughs> to say, I wanted to get to this number and your, and your, your mind would not let you process the information and fool the trade is going against you. Get out the trade. So when it comes to trading, what do you think about? That's a good one there. That's a fair example there. Here's another one. When it comes to taking gains, what comes to your mind? When you're in a trade, and I kind of like threw it out there already. 
So they say you must have been watching that my silly trades today. <laughs> okay, I, I see that, Mike. All right. When it, when it comes to taking game, what comes to your mind, guys? You're in the trade now. And it's, now you, you're up. When it comes to taking trade, what does it what it comes to mind? Get it before the market takes it back. Good. Come on, guys. I need you to type. Come on. It's gonna be a typing type of time here. All right. Can't decide, so my brain is stuck between taking profits and when you can breathe, get more. Yep. Let, me, let it breathe. Yep. Come on, guys, tight. Y'all gonna make me stop. Y'all gonna make me stop. Nobody else typing? All right. It will make me make it to my target. All right, good. Good. Now, now, these things are really good, guys, because this is what happens here. A lot of times, most of our trades that we take, when you push the button, it very rarely goes against you since you push the button. Would you guys agree? It very rarely goes against you. It'll always, it'll go two or three, four, five, 10, 20 ticks into your into the green before it goes against you. And we will see that happen. And the trade will start coming, pulling back on us. And we'll let it go back until it starts to be a red trade. And then we'll cut the trade. Is that the truth? Yeah. So what I want you to do from this point forward, if you get in the trade and that trade goes up five ticks, I don't know, three ticks, 10 ticks, and it starts to come back up on you, before that trade gets to be break even, I need you to take profit. Now, I say that 1%, half a percent, 3%, 2%. I want you to get into the habit of taking profit. That means if that trade takes off and go two ticks, and it start turning back on one tick, take profit. You're going to say, wait, hold on, Kelvin. That's schizophrenic training. Trading. Yeah, it may be. But I'll tell you this here. It's better than having a 10 to 20% loss on 50% of your trades than to have a 2 or 3% gain on 10 or 20 of your trades. You heard that, right? Straight from me. So when I say it turns red, I get out. I do. When I say get out, when it turns red, that trade comes back up on me because I get the trades early. That's a system I use. But I get the trades early, and when that trade gets in the favor, that, and that trade goes up green, I don't let it come back to my stop. Only way I let it come back to my stop, if I push the button, and when I push the button to get in the trade, which very rarely happens, it automatically starts coming against me, and I got to let my stop work itself out. But if that trade goes forward into the future of green, whatever that degree may be, and it starts to come back to me, rather than me letting the trade to go negative, I'll take the 2% gain. That's, that's how I trade it. So when it comes to taking gains, I want you to take your gains, whatever the market gives you. You may desire for it to go to 100 ticks into the future or a $2 move or whatever that may be. But if it comes against you where it takes a winning trade, because everything that goes positive is a winning trade, it loses if you have poor trade risk management. Now, I know, guys, it's contrary to what people teach you, and this is just the way I trade. So hopefully it helps you become a better or more effective trader by being willing to get out the trade with some gains versus no gains. Some gains versus no gains. Consistency. Okay. When, it, when you are setting your stop, what comes into your mind when you're setting your stop? Now, that means that you're preparing to take a trade, you trade, you recognize your edge that came up, and now you're ready to get involved in a trade. When you're getting ready to get involved in a trade, have you, or what is on your mind when you're setting your stop, and how do you set your stop? I want you to remember this question because we're going to open this in discussion because this is a big one right here, Okay. So what do you do, guys, when you say you stop? Do you have a predetermined number that you're going to use? Like you say, well, I'm only going to risk $20 on this trade. Or you're going to help what other tool that you're going to use? You don't have to answer it now. It's going to be a lot of, of be a pretty worthy answer. Because everybody has different rationale on why they place their stops where they are. But there's a formula to every stop that you should have 
on any underlying that you're trading, trading because it has a lot to do with your consistency because stops that are missed um, are not properly set or not properly, uh, if, it, if it's not, oh, I want to say it, if it's not consistent with the behavior pattern of this underlying that you're trading and your stops are being misappropriately set, that means that you're going to be getting stopped out 70 to 80% of your trades. And that means that's going to set your win-loss ratio on your trades, that wrong side of 50-50. So it's very important that you understand how to manage your stops when you're trading because it has a lot to do with your consistency. A properly managed stop, meaning that you can set a, get in the trade and that stop properly set, that, that trade can come back against you with the proper set of stop. It'll pull back into your, into your position where you're actually in the area of getting stopped out and never hit your stop and then turn around and start going forward. How many times you guys are in a trade right now, you get in a trade, it comes out against you, stop you out, and then turn around and run off to the future. Have that ever happened to you before? Type yes in the box if it has. And we're going to help you with That's going to be a nugget you're going to get today. I think it's going to help you next week. Yeah. Yep, always. And it does, guys, because there's, there's a formula, there's a rule that I've established, my rule, on how to manage stops. And I think it works pretty consistently. And so far, the people that I'm working with, I'm, I'm not joking with you. They are... Everybody's over 50-50, okay? And one guy this week, his, his first green week of his career, okay? First green week of his career, and he's averaging nine out of 10 trades he's winning. That's a true statement. Now, it wasn't me. No, it wasn't me. This was his testimony to what was he was experiencing by using the proper risk management protocol. So these three things here, work against you in the area of consistency. If you don't quite understand about when you enter the trade, that means you don't understand your edge. So you'll take any trade that comes up, something that says, oh, I'm getting in this trade and you don't know why you're pushing the button, but you're getting the button, that's never A, okay? So you gotta understand when you get in the trade and well, are you doing it because somebody said you're doing it? Or are you doing it because it met your edge? Are you, are you getting into the trade because is is a certain threshold or place of area of resistance or or place of support that will allow you to get a trade with less exposure when it comes to uh, taking your gains? Are you taking gains too early for fear that that you might lose it, or are you staying in the trade too long and losing the gains that you have for FOMO, fear of missing out? Or are you not getting in a position where you're taking gains at all because all your trades are coming against you? And that could be just some just poor in, uh, execution, which can, we can work on in the future. All right. And setting your stops. Are you properly setting your stops? Because these are the things that I believe that is so essential to you getting the consistency that's necessary for you to be a master trader, to master the art of trading. Okay. These things are not new, guys, but these things are all right here. Your skill set, your ability to trade, your uh, knowing when to get in, understanding your, 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 um, your edge, it's all in place. But there's a disconnect from your thinking about it and executing and doing it. And that is a psychological block. And we, I call it um, market paralysis. Where you get there, it's time to push the button, everything lined up, and you're like, oh, let me wait and see. And then you wait and see, then you push the button, get in the trade, and as soon as you do so, the thing pulls back against you and stops you out. You say, what happened? Your wait and see happened. Understanding your edge will stop you from doing that, and you will get your consistency will start rising immensely, if you understand it. So let's talk about consistency. Things that, that was required for a consistency would be, I would say it'd be this here. It requires a neutral mental state of mind. What does that mean? That means that I am going to look at every trading opportunity that presents itself to me in any given trading day with neutrality, with no preconceived motions. Now, now you may hear me say this here, and we all say it. I have a bias, 
I'm biased that we're going to be going long. And that, that I mean, saying that based on information I have, I, the, if, that I have, the market seems to be going to be moving in this direction. So therefore, I am looking to go long or be bullish in this trading session versus being bearish. That is a bias. But is my bias going to prevent me from seeing an opportunity that may be a bearish play? meaning that opposite of the trend, I call it scalping because if you guys don't know, I'm a scalper. I scalp my trades readily. And so if you are not neutral minded, you can miss opportunities to take trades that can give you 10, 20% almost on a, on, a, on a given, on any given trading day because they always present themselves. But sometimes we'll have a bias or we'll have a, a preconceived, I got to say bias, to, to just only look one direction and not see anything else. Even when the trade is going horribly wrong, we can't see nothing else. And your eyes are seeing it, but your brain is not processing it. So I want you to do this here. You might hear me, this is my saying. What's, what's the market going to do, Kelvin? 50-50. I want you Adopt that word, 50-50. What 50-50 means? I don't know. Up and down, no matter what the market do, I'm going to participate with the market. I'm not going to fight the market. I'm not going to try to force the market anywhere. Wherever the market is going, I'm going with it. With the support of the market behind me, guess what? I'm going to have winning trades. So I want you to have this neutral mindset. So everybody, type in. What's your, what's your favorite word for this week? 50-50. Where the market's going, 50-50, okay? Up and down, 50-50. I'm going to go with the market. Yeah, I want to go long, but the market is giving me a signal to go short. Guess what? I'm going short. Drop of a hat. Not going to think about it at all. And you guys know me when trading, and we taking a trade, and we're in a trade, and we trade, and we're going, we long, and I'll sit on the ground and say, I'll say, I'll say okay, guys, I'm short. They say, wait, 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 I thought you were just long. I was long, but the market just changed direction, gave me another signal, and I take a short. And guess what? I'm still long at the same time. And I take the short, pick up me 10, 20%, cut that trade, and keep on going with the other trade. Because the market presents these signals all the time, but sometimes we can't see it because we have mental blindness on that prevents us from seeing the opportunity that presents us. The market is an open piggy bank for us every day. Today was a perfect example. That market took off today and just never stopped. And I missed opening. I was, and I know why, but, but I was so upset with myself because that messed up my whole day. If I had got that first trade right, man, I'd have ran that market to the cow came home. I know I left a lot of money on the table today. I know I did. In fact, I traded less today, today than I did probably all week. But the market had one red candle and I didn't take advantage of it. And that's not like me, guys. That is not like me. But that's what it is because I missed the opening and it wasn't because I wasn't neutral because I just was, I had my fog this morning. I'm, I'm better now today. <laughs> so let's see. Some things that you have to overcome to, to help you to keep that neutral mindset when it comes to the market and the opportunity that it presents you. First, you must overcome the fear of the future. What does that mean? Meaning that when you push that button to enter that trade, you have no idea what the market is actually going to do. Now, you have a perception because we are probability masters. We had that as one of our trainers, right? What we do is we operate in the area of probabilities, meaning that I am going to take all trades that gives me the highest probability of a favorable outcome. So a probability means that it's not a known fact that it will do something. It's a probability based on historical practices or historical data that I've been studying because I'm a student of the, of the, of the um, market. I've done my technical analysis. I know when the market gets around this area, it normally acts this kind of way. And I use these things, these data points to give me an informed um, 
decision-making process that I can enter a trade at my edge and have a possibility of a favorable outcome. That means probability. But do I know that's going to happen? No, but as soon as I push the button, they can have an announcement from the president or some calamity happened and then the market goes the other way direction. Because one thing I want you to understand, the market is alive, it's active. Now, what makes it alive and active? The individual millions of orders that's being put in by people every day that is operating on the same biases that you operate on, some can consistent with you, some inconsistent with you, some on fear, some based on greed, some based on a whole lot of different things, but it's not rational. So all rationality in the market must be done away with, okay? So fear of the future. That means that when I push the button, I am okay with 50-50. Where it's going to go up or down, I don't know. But I have my safeguards in place just in case it doesn't work out. Does it, your, your trade is either going to work or it's not. Your fear, your panic, your worry, your FOMO is not going to change. One thing, once you push that button, you're out of the control. The control is out of your hand. Only thing you can do at that point is take profit and cut your risk. That's all you can do. That's the only thing you can control. So if you learn to take your trades with a neutral mindset, you're going to have more patience. You're going to be more calm. You're not going to be fearful of what's going on. And you're going to have a better... Sorry, guys. You're going to have a better time trading. And I want you to start enjoying trading because if you're not enjoying trading, guys, you shouldn't be trading because it's a mental game. 90% of your trades are won and lost in the mind, not in your technicals. You can push the button, but if your mind is not right, it, it will cause you to make bad decisions. It'll cause you to enter too early, uh, exit too soon. It'll cause you to, to, to just stay too long. It'll cause you to do all kinds of weird things. So if you're having a bad day, if you're sick, like I was today, I probably shouldn't even trade it, you know, but I did trade. And I, I was two for two. And so here and there, the green was about that big, but, but I got out green. So what can I say? <laughs> but I don't like that. I, I can do better. Don't trade when you don't feel good. That's, that's my warning for you today. The, don't, when you, you got to overcome your past failures, meaning that don't take a trade and say, well, I took this trade three times. I've been losing. This is what people say. Oh, I, I, I lost today, man. I, I lost. I, 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 man, I've been losing all week, and I'm still trading. You know, I'm going to push the button. And then what it does is your subconscious mind, hear this, guys. This is, I'm going to do a whole series on this, this, this subconscious thing. Everything that you say, your subconscious mind takes it literally. It takes it as fact. It stores it in style cameras in your mind. And whenever you get ready to make a decision, a choice on whatever it is that you reason on in your conscious mind, it goes into the subconscious mind, pulls that data, starts sifting through it and find the things that lines up with the things that you want. And it'll give that to you to make a decision on. And that's how you make all your choices. So if you focus on your past failures, when you get ready to push the button, guess what? Your subconscious mind your, but your conscious goes in your subconscious, get the data out on all your failures and show you how to keep doing it over and over again. Offer or for self-fulfilling prophecy is what you're doing. So I want you to stop dwelling on your past failures in trading, in life, in finances, whatever that may be. And I need you to, to be okay with the past is the past. And the past has nothing to do with your future unless you take the past and you pull it into your future through your thinking. So you can pull your past bad trades into your future trades by the way you're thinking when you get ready to execute your trade. So let the past be the past and let the future be undetermined because it's 50-50. You don't know what's going to happen. I want you to start being consistent and enjoying your trading. Next thing is greed, meaning that only take what the market is willing to offer you. Don't try to wait for the last dollar or 50 cents out of the market 
and you in the winning trade, and the, you know it's moved up, and now the trade has started pulling back, and now it's to pull back 25%. Now, this is my rule of thumb. If I'm in the trade, and the winning trade is running, and it pulls back 25%, I immediately cut half my trade. Without thinking about it, I don't say, well, maybe I think I should hold on. No, cut a half out. I know that if I don't pay myself first, the market will not pay me. It'll take it back from me. So a 25% drawback on a winning trade, let's say I'm up 50% and it pulls back to 25%. That's my rule of thumb. Automatically that, that ran 25%. Half of it is, I don't cut the whole trade. I take pay myself the other 25%, put it on the side, and the other half stays in the trade. If it comes back to break even, before I get to break even, about 2 3% up in there, somewhere in the area, I push the button to cut the trade. But most times it won't go back that far. Most trades will pull back 25 30%. It won't go back 100%. But I will cut at, my, at 25%, for 25%, Pull back, I take 50% off the trade, and then no matter what happens, I got paid. And remember that, don't let greed take away your future profits, okay? Don't let greed take away your future profits. You must overcome the lack of confidence in your ability as a trader. I'm gonna say this to you guys right now. You are an excellent trader. Every one of you guys that have been trading for what you've been trading for six weeks or six years or 16 years, you're an excellent trader. You probably know more than you ever need to know about the market. You may know too much about the market. We overcomplicate the trading process. So every trade you take is a possibility of winning. Why? Because it's 50-50, right? You don't know what's going to happen. So why can you, how can you judge yourself to say, well, I'm going to take this trade. It's, a, it's not going to work. If it's 50-50, 50-50 means it can work and it may not work. It doesn't matter. It, the, thing, the only thing that matters is that you take the trade when it meets your edge. So know that you are a master trader. You have the ability to win at your trades at any given moment in time as any other traders out there trading. Now, it's your job to have a system. It's your job to develop your edge. What is your edge? Your edge is knowing where your proper entries will be at any given moment in the trade. I use like the 50 DEMA moving average. I use the 200 DEMA moving average. I use the VWAP moving averages. These are my edges. What does that mean? I know when price gets back to VWAP, market makers buy and sell at VWAP. So when price is coming from the bottom to VWAP, coming up to it, I know that it's possible to get rejected, right? Because if the market makers don't want to go higher. So when it's coming there, I know to take profit. That's an edge. If market, if the price breaks the VWAP and goes above it, I know the market makers allowed it to pass there because they buy and sell at VWAP. I'll support their decision. I'll take the trade with them, put my stop right behind their line in the sand. I let them protect my stop and I take the trade with them. That's my edge. So you should clearly have edges as defined, right? But when you push the button, you don't know what's going to happen because you're a probability master. You're going to go along with the market. If you know they do certain things at certain areas or certain resistance area, breaking high and low of days or weeks or months or whatever that may be, you have to know these things. And then once you define them, then you figure out which one going to be part of your trading profile, which one fits your character, your, your, um, your trading style, and then you use all of them areas to enter and exit trades and take profit. Then you will find that your consistency starts to grow. Consistency starts to grow because you use the things repeatedly over and over again that you begin to recognize these key areas that the market responds, and you only trade these areas, and guess what happens? Your consistency starts to go up. But when you take in every trade because the wind blew or somebody called it out and you don't know why you get into the trade, then you really have no system. And then your, your confidence will be shattered because you're going to be losing more than you should at the trades in, in your area of, of, the, um, of your trading entry and exits. So to get your confidence in place, guys, it's 50-50. So you are just as good as anyone else. That means that 50% chance it can win, 50% chance it can lose. You don't know, but your only job is to only execute on your edges and protect your portfolio. Hopefully that helps you guys.
let's this let's understand risk. Okay. And then we're gonna open up for some some questions and answers. Okay, guys. The market is gonna do what the market is gonna do. Whether you're in the trade or not in the trade, would you guys agree with that? It's gonna go up, it's gonna go down, it's never staying still. In fact, today maybe it did, because it was staying still for a whole long time. Today, I'm like, man, I never seen the market move so slow. That's what made it hard to trade, guys. It did go up, but it was creeping so slowly. There was no runaway. Because we here at, in our trading group, we are breakout traders. We we hit a level, and if it's a breakout, we take the trade, and, and in two seconds, we up 50, 60, 70%, and we cut the trade, we out. But today wasn't that kind of day. If you didn't get the morning run, that trade just, it just mattered around and just, and it was hard to trade it. And that's why I couldn't get in my rhythm in the trade. I said, and I'm not feeling good too. I said, let me just go back over to this market before it ruined me and make me an offer this weekend because my wife put me out. So my baby, you lost all that money today. No, honey, I didn't trade that much. I stayed out of it. <laughs> I'm laughing, but that's some truth to that. <laughs> All right. So know that the market is going to do what the market is going to do. So no matter what goes on, it's not your fault. The market is not against you. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. Your only thing is that you have to understand when you're going to get in, when you're going to get out. You understand when there's chop, when you should be trading, when you should not be trading. And once you know thyself, the rest of the stuff becomes easy because all these things work against your consistency. All right. Know this. You have no control over the market, none. You may want it to go up and like today, everybody, including me, was looking for that thing to hit 3,900 points, just turn around and dump to the sands. Did it happen? No, <laughs> it did not happen. Now, did I want it to happen? Yeah, why? Because I had my shorts ready, I'm gonna get paid, but it didn't happen. Now, I had the bias. I had a bias and I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I couldn't get the thing going up. So I said, let me go in and catch it coming down. So I'm just going to wait for it to hit 3,900. But it didn't happen. So I understood and I was okay knowing that the market is going to do what the market is going to do. I have no control over the market. Today was a perfect example. How many of you guys today were looking for the market to dump at 3,900? Right on top of the net. Everybody better say yes on that because I know if you was trading today, you were looking for that dump. Uh, I, I, I'm like, it didn't happen. I'm like, man, I ain't disappointed. But then that's the way it goes. Because one thing I do know is this here is that the market is not logical. It don't make sense. The, the, I would say this here. The, mark, the market is emotional as could be. <laughs> because it's so finicky. It does all kind of weird things that makes no sense sometimes. But the market is not logical. So if you're looking for the lot, the market to make sense, you're going to be disappointed. So when you accept the fact that you have no control over the market, the market's going to do what it's going to do, and it's not logical, you're going to have a better time trading. You're going to enjoy trading more often because you're never going to be disappointed. I, like the market didn't do what it wanted to do today. I, I didn't like it. I wanted it. Was it disappointed? Yeah, in, in words, I can say so, but I wasn't because the market is not logical. It doesn't make sense. And so I got to take that, that, that illogical market or that emotional market and make it make sense for me so I can take gains on it all the time. So if I get stuck in the pattern that the market is not doing what I want to do, get upset with the market, I start skewing the processing of my thoughts in my head on executing my trades and taking profits and exiting my trades. That would I mess up. So I must really work on keeping my mind neutral. I must really work on keeping my focus clear and paying attention to the things that matters to my success, not to my failures. I have people that, that, that I hear often say, yeah, man, I did this here today and I did, but, um, and I only made, um, and I'm a little bit, and then what that really means is that they're, they, I have a successful trade, and they take they got the got the gains out. They said, "Oh man, I should have held because if I had held, I had made I would have made another five hundred points or another I'm just being no trade, right? Another five hundred dollars to put it that way. And but if I only held, now listen to me, good psychology. 
you just told yourself, next time I get in that position, I'm not going to take profit. I'm going to hold on because I want the other $500. So when you get in that next trade, now it's their same situation set up. And instead of you taking gains, your subconscious mind says, oh, no, don't cut here because you're going to miss out four more hits. And that's where your FOMO comes from. You literally talk yourself in the FOMO by the things that you say. So you have to guard your words, what you say over your trading. You have to guard the way that you think when it comes to trading. You have to make sure that your processing of information is neutral at all times. And that's going to keep you open. You hear me? 50-50, I don't know. Up or down, every candle, you, if you know you're trading with me, every candle, what do you hear me say? What's going to happen, guys? 50-50, up or down. I'm saying that to reset myself. Every 30-minute candle, I'm saying, where's the market going? Up or down? And if you don't think you hear it, listen to me over the time, and you're going to start hearing it more. You're going to say, wait, he ain't lying. Every time you look around, he's saying, where the market going, guys? 50-50, up or down? And that keeps me in the open perspective. And I'm ready to go up or down no matter what I feel the market's going to do. I'm only going to follow what the market actually does. And that keeps me open to making the changes. Okay, all right, guys, and we're going to end. Uh, this is the last one here. Except the three things, except the three things that you can control, this is it. You can control when you're going to enter the trade. You can control how much risk you're going to put on, and when you're going to take profit, and that is it. You cannot control nothing else about the market. Nothing else. Now. Oh, I do have one. In the, identifying your edges. That's what I want to talk about. Developing consistency. Identifying your edges. Your edges are whatever you predetermine that's going to be your entry and your exits on your, on your trades. <clears throat> Meaning that I'm only going to take trades on a brand new candle. Me, mine is the 30-minute candle, either the top of the hour or the bottom of the hour. That's my edge. I'm only going to take a trade if it's breaking the high low of a previous candle. 30-minute candle, hour candle, 15-minute candle, preferably. <clears throat> I'm only going to take trades on the break of the daily, weekly, monthly, high or low, break of VWAP, 50 moving average, 200 moving average, high or low. Okay, these are edges of mine. I'm only going to trade white candles and because I have white candle momentum candles. And these are edges. So I know my edges. So I'm only going to take six types of trades at any given time. At any time, I'm going to take six different trades. I'm going to do it. It's got to meet one of these criteria. I'm not going to trade. So identify your edges. Have your daily trading plan. If you don't have a plan, you need to develop a plan. Get with somebody that has a plan. Copy their plan. And get a plan together. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm not going to do. These are your rules that you're going to have. And I know that the market, I'm going to trade these three tickers here, and I only trade one myself because I just want volatility. But you choose, don't trade 39 different tickers. Find you three or four of them that you really like that moves in any given time frame and stick with them. That's your trading plan. If they don't develop for an actual trade, guess what? You don't trade that day. That's the sign of a disciplined trader. That's consistency with being your trade. Okay. Next, have a set of trading rules that you use daily, and not just use. You, rules that you that you just you don't break. Okay, we have rules, right? We put them in a drawer. We never look at them, but we have trading rules, but we don't look at them. So I'm going to do this here right now, and I know we a little bit a uh, little bit over, guys. But just bear with me. If you don't want to cut out, you can. I do understand. Um, but do, do not break your rules. Your rules are there to protect you. You see, in every game or every strategy, every sport, everything you play with have rules. You either play by the rules and, or you get out the game. Do you know trading is the only thing that you could be doing in your career that has no rules? The only rule for trading is you need money to play. Nobody going to tell you cut the trade. Nobody going to tell you get out the trade. Nobody going to tell you anything. You can do anything you want, and that's the most dangerous place to be where you have the freedom of to do anything you want to do with no constraints. So you have to protect yourself by developing your own rules and you follow your rules because without the rules, you're not protecting. You literally, you literally will be doing some, my word, willy-nilly things, okay? 
things that will really just mess you up. So do not, do not, do not trade without rules. Do not break your rules and do not trade without a plan. Give you eight things. I'm gonna, I did this last week. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it until you get it in your system. You can screenshot if you want to. Eight rules that you must remember while you're trading. Know yourself. Know if you got an addiction to trading. You want to trade three thousand times a day. You know. Know that's gonna get you in trouble. You have a thousand winning trades and two thousand losing trades. You're losing money. So, so know yourself. Meaning that know where your weaknesses are and strengthen them up. Know your strengths and live in them areas. Get your disciplines in place. Have a plan. Know your market. That means that whatever that is that you're trading, know it. Study it. And one of the things that I do, I, I, I trade the indexes. I study them. I know them. And I live within them. And I do pretty well with them. So know what you're trading. Don't just go out and pick a random ticker and say, oh, I'm going to trade this. This looks nice. You're going to end up probably losing money. Your effectiveness and your consistency relies on you knowing your market. Start small. This is what here's for you guys. If you're trading, don't go start off taking 10 contracts. Start with one contract in the trade. If you find the trade start working out, then add other contracts on afterwards. Why risk 10 contracts to, on a trade that may or may not work? How about when you're in a trade and the trades are working out the, with the one contract and the account turns white, then, then add the four or five contracts to the trade you know that's working out, right? So that's, that's a tip, cost you nothing there. So all right to start with one or two contracts and then add to your trade as the trade is working itself out. Like today was a perfect example. We had a runner today, all day today. Um, so if you had started to trade with the, with the one contract and then it started proving itself, got the white count and all the different days, then you add the other five contracts in it. It still would have ran all day. It got confirmed. So start small, okay? Keep it simple, guys. You got 3,000 uh, indicators on your chart, all kinds of bells and whistles and stuff. Turn them off. Get rid of them. You don't need it all. Make it simple. Get your charts down to the basic stuff that you need to know what's on your, what's on your charts. And then I'll, I'll cover that one time the things I think you should have on your, on, your, on your screens. But keep it simple, guys. Have fun with it. Be wary of leverage. Okay, guys? Don't try to... Be, in the revenge trading, you know, you, you get in there, you, you lose three trades, say, okay, I'm going to put 10 trades on this time here. And it, it's going against you. Now your mind all messed up. You, you, you're starting to try to catch back. Don't get involved in that, okay? Uh, keep your records. If you don't journal, you should be. Because if you don't know where you've been, you're definitely going to know where you're going. So you got to journal your records. Keep a trading record to know where your mistakes are and start eliminating them out of your trading process. That's going to help you in the long run. Aim to minimize your losses rather than maximize your gains. I don't set profit targets. Now, I have a target where I want thinking price going to go, and I say, I'll take profit at this area here. I use this would be rule for you. Whenever you're in a trade, if you're long or short, look to the left. Whatever the tip of that candle is in front of you, that's your target. You get to there, then your next target, next candle, and that's how you do your profit targets. Keep them small, keep them close, and go one at a time. You get to that first target. When you stop it to that target, let it get to the next one and keep bouncing up like that. But don't have a place in where you say, I got to get to this uh, this dollar level and it gets five cents from there. And then it's so pull it back. You hold on and lose all that you got. Keep it simple, guys. Aim at minimizing your losses, rather than maximizing your gains. Because the market's going to give you what the market's going to give you. Nothing's going to change with that. Here's words I want you to speak over yourself. Positive affirmations here. I am a consistent winner because say it to yourself right in your own office right now in your room, in your car, wherever you are. I am a consistent winner because say it, I objectively identify my edges. Objectively, that's the key word. I predefine the risk of every trade. I know what I'm risking, why I'm risking it, whether the success is going to be high enough for me to take the trade or I will pass on it. I am completely accept risk or I'm willing to let the trade go. I will completely accept the risk or I will let the trade go. I act on my edges without reservation or hesitation. That means that when that level hits my spot, my edge, I don't think about it. I don't wait and see. I push the button, man. You hear me say it all the time. Push the button, man. 
I've been saying that to myself because why? When that thing hit my edge, I know my edge works because it worked the last 200 times. So push the button. So I have no emotions tied to it, no expectation. I enjoy pushing the button and I, I'm successful at it most of the time. But the times it doesn't work, guess what? That's part of the journey. All right, 50-50, don't know. Push the button, man. So make sure you don't hesitate, know your edges and don't, don't hold back, push them. Uh, I pay myself as the market make money available, money available for me. That trade goes in your favor, take profit. Now, if you're trading one contract, you just got to get out the trade, but do not let it go turn red. You don't have to. If it just starts off and it has to pull back before it gets to going, different story. But if that thing moves up 10, 15%, you should never let that trade go red on you. If you got to get out with 1%, 1% get, and do not say, oh, well, I only made 1%. No, you congratulate yourself for great risk management, taking profit because your whole job is to take money out the market. Who the, what I am? I'm a money magnet. I take money out the market every day. I open my picnic bank up and it pays me. And don't say it only paid me 5% today. No, it paid you. And you know, 90% of the people that's trading today cannot say that. So you make sure you make your, your rewards what they are and do not talk yourself out of doing the right thing. Take gains. I, I continually monitor my susceptibility for making errors. I continually monitor my susceptibility for making errors. So meaning that when you mess up, look what you did wrong, correct it, and then don't do it again until you get it worked out of your portfolio because you should be a 50-50 plus trader every day. The last one would be, I understand the absolute necessity of these principles and, I can, and uh, principles of consistent success, and therefore, I never violate them. Take a screenshot, guys. This is for you. Now, guys, I hope this helps you out. I mean, I really do. And one of the things I, I, I my, my whole reason doing this on my Friday and my wife, I, I thank her part for allowing me to do this, is that you guys become the traders that God has called you to be. Each one of you guys were called to, the, to, to be blessed, to have wealth. Each one of you guys are in a place where God put you here in Juicy Trades. I say the name, I didn't want to do that. But God put you here in this trading group to get the help that you're getting right now. Don't pass it up, guys. Do the things that are necessary to make your career uh, successful because these things work and it's simple, guys. I take the complicated and I break it down to make it simple. I didn't say nothing new today, but hopefully the things I did say did say register to you and hopefully you guys will be a better trader tomorrow because you was here today. So what I want to do at this time here, I'm going to